Propaganda can come in all shapes and forms. Oh my God! From movies to weird ass TikToks. Are you serious right now, bro? So that's why in today's video, I want to talk about all the weird types of propaganda. Bruh. And last episode, I covered some of these, and there's a lot of wacky examples. So if you want to go see that, please go check out that video, because I did really work very hard on it. But with all that out of the way, let's get straight into it. But before we do, make sure to like and subscribe, because it really does help with the video and the algorithm. Anyway, thanks. Let's go. Alright, so let me give you an example of this. So movies from the early 2010s have a weird element of including Chinese propaganda, and this includes movies from Iron Man 3 to Transformers. Now, the reason this is, is because movie studios in the early 2010s had to appease the Chinese market, and more specifically, the Chinese censors who approve all the movies that come into the country. A certain amount of foreign movies are allowed into theaters in a certain year in China, because, you know, censorship is very heavy there, and freedom of speech is not a thing there so that's why movies have to be censored and changed around for them to work and this means that movies which are made here have to be changed and rewritten and redubbed and all this kind of nonsense in order to appease the chinese market which basically means that the writers and the directors cannot apply their own original vision to the movie for what they want because they have to appease the chinese censors and i don't think this needs really any explanation for why i think this is bad i think that directors and writers and all this kind of stuff, all these people who work in the movie, I think they should be able to execute their own vision for the movie rather than someone else's vision. But besides all of the ethical questions on this, let's just talk about all the hilarious weird examples that this brings. What the hell? All right, so another weird example of censorship slash propaganda in a movie would be the Chinese version of Iron Man 3, which actually added additional scenes to the movie. So get this. In the opening of the movie, it opens on a black screen with the text saying, What does Iron Man rely on to revitalize his energy? Then three seconds later, big Chinese characters appear on screen saying, Gu Li Dao, which is a Chinese milk brand. They're saying that one of the strongest characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, who defeated Thanos himself, in order to survive, he needs a random ass brand of Chinese milk. So, you're probably wondering, like me, why exactly did they include this in the movie in the first place? The reason they included this weird-ass product placement was because in 2013, there was a huge scandal in mainland China about milk. The reason why was because people were getting mercury poisoning from milk. So, the Chinese government, they kind of needed some kind of cover-up, and I guess this was their way of doing it by putting a milk product placement in Iron Man 3. Not only that, but they also introduced a whole brand new character called Dr. Wu. And Dr. Wu, he's actually seen drinking on the Chinese milk that I was talking about earlier. And not only that, at the end of the movie, it's shown that Dr. Wu actually operates on Tony Stark to remove his arc reactor. Alright, so another example of propaganda would be in Transformers 4. Now, in this movie, the entire final 20 minutes takes place in Hong Kong. That's where the final battle takes place. Now, what happens is that the Chinese military, they're alerted and they're like prepared immediately. They're like, yeah guys, send in the troops, okay? We gotta go defend Taiwan. Taiwan? What the fuck? We gotta go defend Hong Kong. It's under attack, guys. Let's go, let's go. And for some reason, they're portrayed to be, like, really heroic and patriotic, which is really weird because this movie is American-produced. Not only that, there's a bunch of Chinese product placements, which is actually pretty common in a lot of movies, such as in Into the Spider-Verse. For a few seconds in the movie, you can actually see that there's a product placement for QQ, which is a mobile messaging service owned by Tencent. Ew! Ew! What the fuck? Who basically just ruined every video game known to man. But that's besides the point. Anyway, back to Transformers. Now, something really interesting that they, they decided to do was that they chose to have the final battle in Hong Kong and not in the mainland Chinese city. Probably because they didn't want to actually show the actual destruction of a mainland Chinese city, because in Hong Kong, things just get obliterated here. And apparently, according to them, showing destruction of a mainland Chinese city would just be showing a sign of weakness, which has kind of fucking really stupid reasoning. But, okay then. I mean, you can't really reason with dictators, so I mean, I guess it makes sense why they want to ban it. Bruh. And also, I like to think that they just did it as a little fuck you to Hong Kong, because that just seems like something they would do. 
Now, if you're wondering, nowadays, it doesn't really seem like Marvel movies or many Hollywood movies in general really bow down to the Chinese censors anymore, which honestly, I think that's a really good thing. Top Gun Maverick was originally about to bow down to the Chinese censors by removing this Japanese and Taiwanese flag patch, but that stirred a whole controversy, and after they decided to put it back in, and that got the movie banned in China. But the movie did really well, even without the Chinese audience, and I think that just really proved to a lot of Hollywood people that they don't really need the Chinese censors to really prove their movies to make that much money. And another big example of this would be Spider-Man No Way Home, which was one of the biggest movies of the 2020s, yet it had no Chinese audience at all. And the reason why was because the final scene actually took place at the Statue of Liberty, which, is, which for some reason the censors did not like. But yeah, so honestly, I'm really happy that nowadays Hollywood is starting to stray away from China, and that honestly means that Hollywood will be able to tell more original stories in the way that it actually wants to, which I think is actually really good. Anyway, let's move on to some actual types of propaganda. What I mentioned here was examples of censorship and also how they integrate propaganda into movies. But let's actually get on to some weird, weird examples of how regimes around the world try to use social media to enhance their propaganda. Was that Beijing? All right, so I just found this dumb little Twitter user and they made this really stupid thread. And this thread got 16,000 likes. And um, it's just really fucking propagandistic. And you'll notice a lot of dumb people on Twitter praising China for the most stupidest of things. And uh, it's really dumb. And they usually always post TikTok videos of proof of whatever they're saying. And they're just not good. Before I begin this section, don't go harass this person. It's simply unneeded, even though I do heavily disagree with their takes. Either way, let's begin. China is 3,000 years ahead of the West. Wow, guys. They have bright city lights. No other city in the world has lights. This is so futuristic, guys. Honestly, we should let China take over the whole world now, honestly. Like, this is why communism is good, guys, obviously. And that's we have the TikTok logo, hail the CCP. But this is what it actually looks like without all the fancy drone shots and all the nighttime shots. This is what it actually looks like, guys. Uh, yes, the beautiful comic blocks. Yeah, they're all run down and they're gray. Wake me up when other countries build anything remotely close to this. Technology in China is fire. Let's see what they're talking about. CGI video and say that was real? This is not real. This is not a real video, bro. <laughs> Does this guy think it's real? Don't you feel silly? Don't you feel stupid? And also, um, there is a little bit of a reader's context note. This is CGI. Thank you, Twitter, for that noise. I would have never guessed based off of this amazing realism in this video. Now, this is awesome. Eastern e-girls have mastered the art of digital photography and taking selfies. The West couldn't compete even with a thousand year head start. Alright, so let's see what the supposed godlike method of taking images is. Let's check this out. Wow. Wow! So they take blurry pictures of themselves. Now this, now these photography techniques are epic. Who would have ever known to shake the camera to make a blurry camera effect? In China, you can modify your body to be a high-tech cyborg and it's 100% safe. What? No. Are you dumb? <laughs> are, you, are you stupid? What, what, what does that mean? <laughs> what does that even mean? And the thing is, the video that they use for proof of being a cyborg in China is Sexy Cyborg. Does this person know that Sexy Cyborg is a nickname? She's not literally an actual cyborg. That's just her nickname. <laughs> 
and also body modification is everywhere and it's also not 100% safe to modify your body. Alright, for this next one, I don't even have any commentary. I'm just gonna let the video speak for itself. Yo dudes, the Empire's pretty chill. Maybe you could like join it or something. Yeah, I don't really know what to do with the first TikTok is. I think this might be some kind of parody account, and if it's not, North Korea may be trying to delve into propaganda, which if they are, uh, good on them, I guess, but they should probably be focusing on feeding their own people first. Anyway. Okay, so do you know the Chinese government is now making rap songs about cotton? You might be wondering why exactly. Well, I don't really have time to explain it, so just look up Uyghur cotton. But a TLDR is basically that... Um, in a region of China in the far west, they're using essentially slave forced labor to harvest cotton. So I guess the Chinese government, they just looked at an American history book from the 1800s and they decided to mimic that. Good job guys. So basically they're trying to defend what they're doing and they made a rap song about it. So let's see what awesomeness this has. Oh yeah, so by the way, I really like this dislike ratio. <laughs> All right, so I've only listened to this song for 19 seconds, and it feels like I have ear cancer right now. Metro booming who? Kanye West who? Okay, we all love Sanya or the water fuck her name is. I, I, I don't fucking know. <laughs> Alright, so these next two videos, I'm actually going to intersplice them together with one another because they're both basically the same. They talk about the same topic, the same talking points, and they're both propaganda videos that talk about a particular city in China called Chongqing. Now, the thing about this city is that I've noticed that in Chinese propaganda, or more generally propaganda in general, they like to do a certain narrative push where they like to push the same agenda at the same exact time. So on Instagram and Twitter, I saw these two different videos respectively, and I think it's because the Chinese government right now are trying to push the city out as being some futuristic hub of innovation. This may be the most futuristic city in the world. Wait a minute, was that a train going through a fucking building? How is that good design? That's just poorly designed. What the fuck was that? Chongqing has trains that go through buildings. Oh my god, it was a train going through a fucking building. Why? Why is it an advertising point? That's not a good thing. That's an engineering disaster. For some reason, they show this in both the propaganda videos too. It has fireworks that are so big it can be seen from space. space. Tim Curry just had to be included there. 24 7 shops everywhere. Oh wow, they have 24 7 shops. It's not like every other city in the world has that. Wow. Now that's innovation. Elegant and good nightlife. Yeah, there's good nightlife in the city if you're not poor or if you don't work in the farms, which most people in the city do. Safest city, you will always feel safe. Uh, I doubt that. And the food is so spicy, it will burn your insides. Wow, spicy food equals the future. This is so futuristic, guys. No one will bother you. No one will make comments. They will just say, well, a foreigner. I really hate how pretentious this part feels. You can definitely tell she's a very entitled foreigner living in China. But in general, this person just seems really out of touch with reality and what the actual real situation is on the ground. Oh yeah, also they're definitely talking behind her back because why is she running around like a maniac right now? Like what is happening? It's basically the real life cyberpunk. Would you visit it? You know cyberpunk is a bad thing, right? Not only is the game extremely buggy, but the cyberpunk genre is dystopian by nature. Basically, you're implying that this is dystopian, which it is. So, good job on that one, I guess. You failed at the one thing you're supposed to do. Alright, so this video went on a lot longer than I expected it to. And the main takeaway I think we can take away from this video is that we learned a lot about how propaganda can be everywhere and how it can also influence and change our opinions. It can be especially prevalent in even ways we escape reality, such as with movies, but also with the social media that we consume, which is why it's very careful and important 
that we pay attention to these kinds of things and also that we use critical thinking skills to make sure that we avoid these kinds of tactics in the future, but also so that we can laugh at how stupid the propaganda really is. And we can also just recognize how silly it all is. But yeah, that's all I really have to say. If you guys liked the video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, because it really doesn't help the channel. And that's all I have to say. So, thank you for watching. See ya. Peace. Goodbye.